The next paper is on idiopathic orbital inflammation of orbit and ocular adnexa, histopathological analysis by Dr. Dipankar Das. Good morning, respected chairpersons and ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the, the topic of my free paper is histopathological analysis of orbital inflammation as well as the ocular adnexa. I do not have any financial or commercial interest in any of the material discussed in this presentation. Non-specific orbital inflammation affects the orbital tissue including fats, lacrimal glands, extraocular muscle, focally or diffusely. Incidence and prevalence uh, finding of non-specific inflammatory disease of orbit based on scientific li literature was very difficult as it is dependent on inclusion or not specific and non-specific inflammatory pathologies. The aim of the study is to present a histopathological analysis of idiopathic orbital inflammation uh, of ocular adnexa. This was a retrospective study, uh, laboratory based. Study was carried out in an ocular pathology laboratory in a tertiary institute of Northeast India, where analysis of 93 cases were seen in last five years from a period of 2011 to 2016. Routine hematoxyl in eosin stain, then GMS, AFB, and GIS was carried out, and uh, no, uh, immunohistochemistry for CD3, CD20, that is a B cell and T cell marker, along with the lambda and kappa, and IgG4, serum IgG4, uh, were carried out according to the presentation. So total uh, 93 cases, 6.64 percent of non-specific orbital inflammation were reported out of 1,467 specimen. Now orbital pseudotumor as we knew nomenclature IOID were seen in 27 cases where sclerosing variety was seen in 6 cases, benign lymphoid hyperplasia in 2 cases, reactive lymphoid hyperplasia in 10 cases, plasma lymphoproliferative reactive lesion in four cases, IgG4 related disease in one cases, and non-specific inflammatory reaction in the conjunctiva sclera and the lead were seen in 49 cases. Now this is a uh, uh, cases where the uh, HND state showing a lymphoplasma uh, uh, histo or eosinophilic infiltration where GMS, G, uh, gram stain as well as acid fast bacillus stain was negative. CD20 which is a B cell marker was positive, uh, uh, plus 2 or plus 1, CD3 also positive, CD45 which is a LCA, leukocyte common antigen was also positive with uh, um, positive and negative of the B cell, uh, 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 CL uh, and also in one case IgG4 was positive. Grossly, if you see lesion displayed a grayish white colored tissue and microscopically revealed inflammation in the orbital structure uh, and cellular infiltrates that were focal, multifocal or diffuse. Pathology of typical non-specific orbital inflammation were characterized by cellular infiltrate, vascular uh, congestion uh, uh, tissue and altered lacrimal gland tissue and disturbance in the orbital structures. Cellular infiltration showed a mixed cellular response, perivascular and lymphoplasma uh, histocytical infiltration were seen along with eosinophil sometimes tracing the capillary adventitia. The sclerosing pattern were noticed in the periductal tissue in the lacrimal uh, gland and also in the atrophied echina was also seen. So total 93 cases were seen uh, and IOD, IOID uh, was seen in 27 cases. Now in all the cases, infection, jogren disease, thyroid eye disease, rheumatoid arteries, lymphomas and uh, GPA etc were excluded from the cohort. Now when we discuss the key, uh, 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 this paper, the Morius and Prada et al. studied 189 cases of non-infectious inflammatory disorder, both specific and non-specific, and found their incidence was 12.8 percent among the orbital uh, tissue, excluding the thyroid orbitopathy. Pseudotumor in the series or non-specific inflammation were frequently varied in 30 cases, anterior was in 20 cases, decroidinitis in 26 cases, and myositis in 24 case, cases. Our histopathological cases were almost half of the cases of this. Now if you see the clinical codes of IOID particularly determine how and often the patient encountered the primary antigen and there could be a single exposure or multiple or intermittent exposure if, if the self antigen is involved, the chronic autoimmune process sets in. To conclude, biopsy supported uh, study 
on non-specific orbital inflammation was important to know the pattern. Further, larger multicentric studies will be will give a better insight on the clinical pathological aspect of the inflammatory orbital disease. These are my selected references. I like to thank our patient in Shishankar Dev Netrala Oculoplastic Department, uh, Netrala Pathology Laboratory, Professor Pannadeka, Apurva, and Sora for this presentation. Thank you for patient hearing. Um, nice presentation. Thank you. So, um, one doubt I had is you uh, mentioned that you selected patients from 2011 to 2016 and you had one case of IgG4 disease. So, were all of these patients from 2011 subjected? How was testing for IgG4 decided? All of these? Uh, IgG4, actually, if the, because there is a very new entity that has been described and some selected cases when IgG4 was known and one of the cases, you know, we diagnosed a intracular tumor masquerade as IgG4 that opened our mind that orbital diseases, you know, are also important for this. What you do if you see a IgG4 disease, we see the tissue IgG4 level and in tissue IgG4 level along with IgG, if it's more than say 40 percent, along with the serum IgG4 positivity, serum IgG4 positivity, the specific level we take around 135 milligram per deciliter if it's a high. But most important thing is that the, in the tissue, we get a lymphoplasma histocytic lesion, mostly a plasma cell predominance. And here, the both kappa and lambda are positive in this situation with CD138 positivity. In that group, if the IgG4 is raised, okay, then we take as a criteria for IgG4 disease. It should represent the tissue IgG4, it should represent serum IgG4, so that way we diagnose. So it's only one case and we believe that, you know, for last few, uh, say last year we have seen a lot of cases of IgG4 disease. You know, these are mostly seen clinically where multiple organs are involved chest the fibrotic uh, manifestations are there there's a liver involvement so extended igg4 disease that we are encountering nowadays yeah so considering uh, the duration that you have shown you might have possibly underestimated uh, the igg4 disease was that's, my only true. that's true that's true exactly I, I would agree with her that if you go back and look at some of your specimens now you may, you know, change your diagnosis for some of them. Yeah, there is a there is a project that both U.S. and uh, India-based project that is being now uh, drafted for a DBT project where all these IgG4 as well as the other orbital inflammatory diseases are taken into account. This is guided by Professor Rosenbaum uh, and the Indian uh, study from Shankar Netara along with the other where we'll see all these molecules present on there or not. Sir, uh, I have a question too. So, did you come across, did you encounter any situation where you actually suspected IOID and then you did a biopsy and it turned out uh, different and in such cases, what did you actually do? Yeah, that's again an interesting question. If you suspect an IOID case, a, a clinician has you no know, uh, level it a pseudo tumor and you no know, in biopsy, you see a uh, uh, what you call a monomorphic cell and you do a uh, CD20 as well as CD3. If you see CD20 is much more, then no, you grade them as a, a mal lymphoma or like this, okay? Again, CD3 positive, T-cell lymphoma is very, very rare, very, very rare. So basically you see a mal lymphoma, mucosal associated lymphoma in those groups. One point is there. Second point is there. Some of the pseudotumor pre-diagnosed, if you take a history of a sinusitis or a you know, chest uh, involvement, then the, the Wagner granulomatosis or newer term GPA come into action. Okay. Then all the cases we have to rule out uh, acid fast bacilli. You have to rule out a 
fungus infection, you have to rule out a, uh, a, a, a bacterial infection to level it as a IOID. So, I put that lymphoma because you see some of the uh, lymphoma, we, because these big cell lymphomas are very, very low grade lymphoma. Some of the lymphomas are transition zone lymphomas. They are combined, uh, they, are, they are transforming from a uh, low grade to the high grade. In those zone also, we see some of the pathologies also. So, uh, how, how did you, so treatment was based on your histopathology, isn't it? So, yes. in which case treatment was delayed for some patients or uh, how did it work? No, if it is a, it is, if it is a IOID, so all other infection as a lymphoma is ruled out, immediately steroids are given in this patient in the systemic form. Are uh, established to rule out screening? To rule out? To screen the cases. Yeah, biomarker if you see, uh, if you see b uh, other biomarkers, if you see this IgG4 is a marker for a IgG4 related disease. For example, uh, there are newer markers that has been tried out, tried out or no, these are in experimental stage. For example, whether a TGF beta can be a marker for a inflammation, whether other interleukin can be marker for the inflammation, whether no other cytokines can be marker for inflammation. These are, most of them are in the experimental stages. Panka will take, you can take a class for all of us later.